Navigating friendships with two people who don't like each other can feel like a full-time job. Let me share how to set boundaries and keep both friendships healthy. Keep on watching. Welcome to Blissful Consults with yours truly, Dr. Cami, a PhD licensed psychotherapist with special training in trauma-informed healthcare. Clara from California wrote in with a question about how to navigate friendships with two people who do not like each other. Dear Dr. Cami, I have two close friends and we all used to be a trio. Let's call them Danny and Steph. Danny and Steph had a really big falling out and neither of them acted in an appropriate way. There was fault on both sides. My friend Steph assumed I stopped talking to Danny when they had the falling out. However, I've been talking to him pretty consistently. Sometimes she will bring up Danny and imply how grateful she is that I cut him off and I'm loyal to her. Meanwhile, I've been talking with him for the last year. Should I keep this a secret or disclose to her and risk losing the friendship? Clara from California. Let's dig into this together and figure it out. Hello, my name is Dr. Cami, and I am the founder and president of Bliss in Being. We offer cutting edge psychotherapy and coaching for people who are ready to heal from the effects of chronic stress and trauma. I personally can help you move from the brink of burnout to holistic thriving. It's time for you to finally enjoy the life you've worked so hard to build, and I am here to help you make it happen. In psychology, there's what we call triangulation in relationships, and this question brings just that to mind. The concept of triangulation explains that we are all drawn into triangles as a way of reducing tension and anxiety. In every triangle, a stronger bond exists between two points, while the third point is usually relegated. We can also say in a triangle, there's always one person on the outside and two people on the inside. There are so many examples of this happening every day as we go about our lives, and we may not even know that this is what it, that this is what it is. For instance, two parents are having a fight, and there's a lot of tension between them. One of the parents now brings in one of the children as an outsider to exclude the other parent. The tension point in every triangle can change. For example, when the parents are back to being on good terms, they're then going to push out the child. It's always a constant push between different points of the triangle according to where the tension lies. The thing about triangles is that the anxiety remains until it is dealt with. Pushing or transferring it to the third point won't do any good. One of the most solid examples of triangulation is precisely what you have described, three friends. Anxiety in relationships is normal, but it should be worked through rather than pushed to a third point. In this case, your friendship has become a triangle and your best friend is trying to divert her anxiety to you. In triangles, when there's a lot of tension, the person on the outside feels more comfortable. So the most uncomfortable insider tries to create a squabble between the other insider and the outsider so that they can move to the outside position. When the strife between the two insiders decreases, the outsider will come back and try to become an insider once again. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Your friend is trying to pull you all into a triangle, and it's vital that you not be brought in. As humans, it's our nature to form triangles unconsciously, but it's also our duty to recognize them and to set boundaries. It would be best to tell your friend that you will not be pulled into any triangle. You understand that there's a problem between them, but that's for them to work out between themselves. Let the cat out of the bag and come clean to your friend about still talking to Danny. Be more open to your friends about the fact that they are triangulating you and you no longer want to be in that triangle. Overall, make Steph understand that you see her perspective, but ending your relationship with Danny should not be the yardstick to measure your friendship. This is how you set boundaries and detach from a triangle. Triangles can occur in any relationship. You can try to learn more about it and do more, co and do more, more conscious efforts to break out once you've been roped in. 
If there are problems between two people in your friend group, let them work it out. If your parents having issues with your partner, work it out without pulling your kids in. If you're a child with parents constantly pulling you into their triangle, refuse to be drawn in and advise them to sort out their problems. Refuse to be the third point for other people's tension and anxiety. Boundaries are always a good thing, but triangles are not. So come clean to your friend and break out of the triangle. If she's a good one, you shouldn't have to lose her in the process. 